Nothing like starting at the top. And he, who would be the top of my list of musicians? But John Coltrane. And this photo I took in 1966 at the Drome Lounge in Detroit, where he was having a week-long stay. And I happened to go see him every night on account of his drummer, Rashid Ali, was staying at our house, and I was privileged to drive him to the gig every day and see the concert. But at the drum lounge, there was only like a little red light above the bandstand, and I was lucky to get one picture where he stood still long enough to get a good exposure. <laughs> then we go to Iggy at the Detroit Rock and Roll Revival, which was 50 years in June. And Iggy, he was on, on the roster, but he is backstage whispering something to this girl, but who knows what. <laughs> then we have John Lennon and Yoko Ono at the John Sinclair Freedom Rally at Chrysler Arena in Ann Arbor, Michigan. It was on December 10th, 1971, when John Lennon and Yoko Ono came to head, headline a benefit to, uh, for John Sinclair, who was sentenced to nine and a half to 10 years for possession of two joints of marijuana. And on account of this big concert, which was sold out uh, immediately after they announced they would be coming. This was Friday night on December 10th, and on Monday morning, December 13th, they opened up the gates of Jackson Prison and let him out. Three days later, <laughs> he oh was two and a half years, and even John Lennon, he could relate to it because he had been convicted of possessing marijuana or hashish in London at a hotel room, you know, so he was sympathetic. So that's how that happened. A picture of the members of the White Panther Party commune at 1520 Hill Street in Ann Arbor, Michigan in 1970. What's interesting about this, one of the White Panthers is a Hiawatha Bailey, an African American, and he just, you know, I think of it, he wouldn't have lasted one day in the Macho Black Panther Party because he was gay <laughs> and he was a hippie and he fitted in mo better with the White Panther Party <laughs> than the Black Panther Party. <laughs> so we didn't discriminate on account of color. <laughs> <laughs> then we have this uh, picture of Fred Smith guitar player for the MC5 in East Lansing, Michigan, in 1969, where he is like waving his guitar way high in the air, probably with a lot of feedback. <laughs> you know? Well, here we have one of my favorite photos of all time. It's a poem for Medgar Evers. Uh, who had just been assassinated like two or three weeks before this picture was taken, and somebody had w written a poem and printed it on, I think it's the back of a truck, I can't really tell where it is, but it's an incredible poem uh, about the death of Medgar Evans, taken on August 28, 1963, in the March on Washington. Then we have Women for Peace demonstration along Woodward Avenue in Detroit, Michigan. And the Women for Peace were famous for carrying uh, these uh, skulls, you know, reminding people that war is not good for people. <laughs> you know. So anyway, they were marching down Woodward on a cold day. And right underneath it is a picture of Detroit police officer on horseback, and they were called the demonstration detail because they were always looking for people to arrest 
<laughs> in a demonstration, if people went out of line or their power controls, they would be right there on their horses to arrest people in the crowd. Miriam Brown in Toronto in 1965. Miriam Brown was the sax alto saxophone player who recorded with John Coltrane, but he also made records on, on, under his own name. And he was kind of a friend of the family. We had met him years before, well, in, in New York, and he came to Detroit performing. We named our oldest daughter after him. Million Sunny Sinclair. Sunny is for Sandra, <laughs> and Million is for Million Brown. Well, he's passed away oh, quite a few years ago. Uh, Joseph Jarman in Delhi Park in Ann Arbor, Michigan, 1966. Uh, I think this picture was taken before he even started the Art Ensemble of Chicago. Before that, he had a group called the Joseph Jarman Billy Bringfield Quintet, and they played at the Detroit Artists Workshop. We had an out outing in the park one afternoon, and he played saxophone in the woods. And we have a picture of the MC5 at Community Arts Auditorium at Wayne State University in June of 1967. This was a famous concert where the MC5 uh, played with Sun Ra, and it was a, a phenomenal concert because that's one of the, the first times Sun Ra had played in Detroit. And the MC5, uh, they were all dedicated to avant-garde jazz partially because John Sinclair was their manager and he made sure they listened to Sandra <laughs> and they loved it, yeah. Oh, Lyman Woodard. Lyman Woodard is one of the greatest unsung heroes of Detroit. If he had left like so many other musicians and went to New York, he could have made a big name for himself. In fact, his first record is called Saturday Night Special. Every time you hear it on the radio, it feels like a classic from a long time ago, you know, that is timeless, you know. He played the Hammond B.C. organ, and um, he passed away a few years ago, too. B.B. King at the Ann Arbor Blues and Jazz Festival in Exile in Windsor, Ontario, 1974. Uh, this was in exile because in Ann Arbor, the Detroit City Council had been taken over by the Republicans again, and they refused to give us a permit to hold the Blues and Jazz Festival in Ann Arbor because it brought in too many undesirables. And so uh, we, uh, we, at the last minute, a few weeks before the date, the University of Windsor offered us to have it there. It was a total financial disaster, and the police at the border arrested about 200 people for a week trying to go to a festival with a few joints, and then they end up in jail. Oh, those were the good old days. I mean, the bad old days. <laughs> yeah. Then we have Marvin Gaye at the University of Detroit Field House. It was one of those early cool jazz festivals, and the other people in the show were Smokey Robinson. Then we have Sun Ra at the Savoy Ballroom in the Fort Shelby Hotel, 1974. No words needed. If you know Sun Ra, you'll love this picture. <laughs> 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 Sun Ra, the musician from outer space. He wouldn't tell people when he was born because he said, if you were born, you'd die, and I'm never going to die. I'm from outer space, you know. He had this great myth about him, but he had some incredible musicians that were so loyal and dedicated to him, like Pat Patrick, who stayed with him for 30 years. Every time San, San Rao played somewhere, it was a visual delight, along with the music. The whole band always dressed up in fancy costumes and glittering. Had, you know, there was part of the band was more than just the band, you know. They were outrageous, and they pissed people off, and 
some of them loved them very much, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and the people that loved Sanra very much are increasing now by the day. The, the longer he's dead, he's like, you know, more popular than ever. Here is the picture of Fela at Orchestra Hall in 1986. However, that's a mistake. I found out later that it was not at Orchestra Hall, it was at the Fox Theater. And there's even a recording made of that night at the, at, at the Fox Theater with people yelling, Fela, Fela. I think one of them might have been me. <laughs> <laughs> but I got this really nice picture of him waving his fist in the air, which is now iconic in Lagos, Nigeria. You see it everywhere on billboards and flags and T-shirts. They love my picture there. Not too many people in America know who Fela was, you know. And um, since they used my photograph as a, a for a photo illustration for the movie Finding Fela, Without my permission, I got a trip to Lagos, an all-expense-paid trip to Lagos, and I saw all these musicians. And then his daughter, Yenny Laney, said that her dad, Fela, had seen this picture and always wondered who took it. And there was little me. Then we have Charles Mingus at the Rainbow Room at the Fort Shelby Hotel which actually was the same venue as the Savoy. We just changed the name when new ownership came about or ma management came about. Well, Charles Mingus, one of the genius, a bassist, one of the genius musicians and band leader. Was lucky to get this nice shadow from here. Yeah. And Thelonious Monk and Ben Riley at Cobo Hall in 19, January 1967. There was quite a night because John Coltrane and his quartet were supposed to play. However, there was a huge snow, snowstorm in New York. Some of them, like Jimmy Garrison, McCoy Tyner, and Alvin Jones, got stuck on the train, couldn't make it. So this was an impromptu aggregation. And and John Coltrane was there, and Thelonious Monk and John Coltrane played together that night at Cobo Hall. And that was in January of 1967, and John Coltrane passed away later on that year. Uh, Allen Ginsberg, Charles Olson, and other poets at the Berkeley Poetry Conference in 1965. It was a very famous conference because almost all the great poets were there gathered. And in this picture, this happens to be a double exposure, an unintentional double exposure, which shows Allen Ginsberg and Charles Olson sitting there in the cafeteria eating some lunch. And then also in the picture, I recognized Robert Creeley, John Reynolds, but there was, a, there was a great poetry conference, and they're still talking about it on the internet to this day. <laughs> what a decisive conference there was. And we traveled from Detroit to Berkeley because uh, Ed Sanders was one of the uh, poets at the conference, and he had invited John Sinclair to read poems there too. So we drove to California. Mm -hmm. 